Hey guys, this is going to be part one of a two-part video where I show you how to make your own custom loungefly mini backpack or crossbody. Today I'll be doing a crossbody. Okay, this is our cute little Pokemon crossbody bag and we're actually going to make this into a Christmas bag. 99% of the time I'll keep the metal plaque that comes on these bags and often I'll actually customize it because I always want it to correspond with the bag I'm creating. However, this time around I decided I didn't want that metal plate. So what you see me doing is with my small scissors I cut across the top of the inside lining of this bag so I can stick a flathead screwdriver into it. And with this I'll just be prying those two metal prongs away from the backing that you can see in this photo. And then with one side loose, I basically can manipulate the plate to come off by wiggling it from the front of the bag. After the metal plate is removed, I'll then just go in and I'll cut those seams um, to get rid of that brown leather backing that you see is on the that's on the front of the bag. There'll be two holes left behind from where the plaque inserted itself, but since we're putting fabric over it, you'll never know. And after this, I'll then just go back inside the bag and use my fabric glue to close up the previous hole I made. It may seem like a lot, but it's pretty simple. Just glue, hold the fabric down. And for those of you who are wondering, I don't change out the inside lining of the bag. I don't know how. Sometimes I get lucky, I'll have a bag with a solid color as its inside lining. But in cases like this, does it bother me having a Christmas bag on the outside and a Pokemon print on the inside? Absolutely not. So the next step I'm going to do with this bag is taking my white leather paint. You can find this one at Michael's or any craft stores, in-store and online. And I'm just going to paint over the Pokemon print so the characters aren't as pronounced and I won't run into the potential risk of the original print coming through my fabrics print. I usually just do two coats of this and I find that's what generally works for me. And while that's drying, I'll move on to rough cutting my fabric as well as treating my fabric to make it water resistant and easier to work with. So this step is actually super easy. Basically, I just lay the fabric over the different parts of the bag while keeping in mind like what characters I want where and making sure that the design is straight. And from there, I'll just cut around, giving myself an inch or two allowance around the edges. So that way I have room to play with when it comes to taping down the fabric when I have to treat it and then also uh, laying the fabric down on the actual bag when it comes to assembling it. So first things first, I'm going to lay down wax paper to protect my table from getting ruined because definitely don't want that. <laughs> um, I'll then go with the blue painter's tape and make sure everything lays flat and doesn't move. And then next I'm going to take the pieces of fabric that I had previously rough cut for my bag and I'm also going to be taping them down flat onto the wax paper so when I'm treating them with OD coat, they also won't be able to move and I'll leave what you see there like the blue pieces of paper actually little little notes of what pieces are what so I don't accidentally when it comes to assembling my bag use my back piece as my front and then when I go to use the front piece for my back it's too short and I end up wasting fabric. So what you see here is OD coat and this is my go-to for treating my fabric. Uh, I know some people use Scotchgard spray to protect their bags. I've never used Scotchgard, so I can't advise on that product. But as far as OD coat goes, it really does a wonderful job at making your fabric water repellent, water resistant, waterproof. The reason why I say that is because you can use it in one, two, or three layers. One layer will be a matte finish and it'll be considered water repellent. Two layers um, will be considered water resistant with a gloss finish. And then three layers is considered waterproof and a high gloss finish. Now, I always do three layers, but does this mean I'm going to dunk my bag in a bucket of water and test that waterproof theory? Absolutely not, but I have gotten caught in the rain with my customized bags, and I've never had to worry about it. They were always fine. And generally, what you see me doing is I'm spreading the gel with an old expired gift card, because depending where you order this stuff online, they sometimes send you a card meant to spread that gel. And other times they don't send you the card. So I always go for an expired credit card, gift card I have just laying around and I'll use that to um, spread OD coat. I know some people use brushes. I just feel brushes leave brush strokes behind where using this card gives you a lot smoother of appearance. You don't get the brush stroke. It's just, I think it's easier to work with. Um, so what you see is I dip the card into the gel and I get a decent amount. 
and with that i just spread it onto the fabric in a nice even coat the first layer is always the hardest because it's more liable to skip on the fabric as you're dragging the card uh just because the fabric's dry so it's really going to soak up a lot of that product and it's I guess it's more loose and that's why it's like skipping and stuff but by the time you get to the second or third layer you'll see that you're using a lot less product the fabric basically it doesn't skip anymore and you're just ease easily able to glide it on once i finish putting on the first layer i'm gonna wait an hour before i put on the second layer and then another hour before i put on the last the third layer now i've read directions online where some will actually tell you to iron the fabric in between each layer and then others will say that ironing isn't needed until after the last layer 24 hours later and that's the method i prefer and it's always worked for me and if i'm being honest do i actually wait the 24 hours uh nah um a lot of times i'm working on this in the afternoon or evening so once i wake up the next day that's when i iron it so realistically maybe i wait anywhere from 12 to 20 hours after the last layer um, and I'll just note that the purpose of ironing is it cures the gel coating and you'll feel prior to ironing the fabric will feel a bit rough and then after ironing it just feels a lot smoother and almost sort of like a smooth vinyl texture I guess is the best way I can describe it. Okay guys, so it's the next day and I'm actually going to peel off my blue painter's tape and I'm going to cut off the edges of the fabric that aren't coated. I'll insert a photo so you can see the difference between parts of the fabric that are coated versus parts that aren't. You can see it right there. And I just realized I never mentioned what fabric I'm using. I'm using cotton lycra so it does have a four-way stretch. I find this one of the easier fabrics to work with. And our last step is just ironing the pieces of fabric. Um, I do this between two pieces of parchment paper and I have the iron on the blend setting. I just find it works best. I do this for 45 seconds to a minute per each section. And now that all the sections are set to go and smooth to the touch, we can now assemble our bag. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. And don't forget to check out this video's description for the link to part two on how to assemble a custom bag. Like and subscribe. I'll see you again soon.